I'm here at Bukit Batok Block 155 today, a popular wet market in Bukit Batok in search of the best Hokkien Mee in Singapore. And today we are here for two Hokkien Mee's. I messed up in the last episode, I said something like how every friend I had in Bukit Batok knew about the neighbor walk. But then I realized the neighbor walk has only been around for two to three years. How can my friends from way back tell me about it? It would make more sense if they were instead telling me about one of two very popular Hokkien Mee places in this wet market area, both of which have been around for a very long time and friends have told me that they have been eating this growing up. If they are my friends, you know that they have been growing up for a very long time. So today will be a two plate episode special. Let's get it boys. Hey, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, how is it? So we are starting out with Yongheng Fried Squid Prawn Mee. Here say this place has been here since the 1980s and they have free flow lard at the counter. They have like a Tupperware with all the lard there. You can help yourself to as much as you want. But you know, be nice. Lard is cheap but it's still not free. I got about a tablespoon, which is an amount I'll be really happy with if I do get it elsewhere. Anyway, let's get it. We're dealing with a wet version here today. Ooh. Oh, this is insane. <laughs> I need to talk. This is why I like to do this series. Every now and then, right, you get this one version that just exceeds expectations. The first hit is the prawn flavor. It is so strong. It's that flavor you get, right, when you suck on a prawn's tomale. That almost funky seafoody smell. And it's here in the noodles. So if it's here in the noodles, how much of it must have been in the stock? When you have that strong of a seafood flavor, suddenly the lard tastes really good. Like that lard has so much headroom to go. That crispy lard bits that I took, poh, explosive and still very crispy by the way. Even the chili, which is a sweet one that I don't prefer for the dish, right? Is really fragrant. You can taste like the shrimp bits in the chili. Actual high quality chili, not the normal sugary filler chili. It is so good, right, that I didn't manage to use the lime. The plate just disappeared in front of me. The misses are going to be so difficult. Too cheap. 450 too cheap. With free flow lard, cannot. Need to be 550 at least. Shut up, Eldrick. Shut up. Shut up, Eldrick. If we are splitting straws, we can talk about the wok now. When you have everything else on point already, right, when it's the difference maker, right, then it is relevant. This is very clean, no smoky taste at all, just a lot of seafood taste. Okay, there is a miss. I'm not confident of saying this. I might be wrong, okay? It's too tasty. And by too tasty, I mean, I think they use too much MSG. Don't get me wrong, I'm super okay with using MSG, but there is a certain scale to it. You need to use MSG in a way that it improves your ingredients because the basics of using MSG is to add monosodium glutamate to ingredients which are not the best. So, like tomatoes that have been harvested before they are, they are ripe in order to have a longer shelf life, they haven't had the chance to develop the optimal amount of glutamate. That is where MSG comes in. Once you use MSG such that it's detectable, right, then the mission has failed. So coming back to these noodles, you can taste at the end, like there is this very awkward, tasty flavor, especially now that the noodles have uh, cooled, it's even more obvious. But I say this much, but I'm, I'm, I might, might actually be wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. I've cooked with MSG before. Now there's this like sweet, tasty feeling, which is exactly the taste of MSG. If it turns out they don't use MSG in their noodles, then their miss will be really that they are too tasty. <laughs> I'm done here. Time to move on to the second plate of the day. Let's go, boys. Hello. Uh, the next place is just next door. It's a 777 fried hawk and prawn mee. Again, we are going with the 450 version. And this plate came really fast. Like two minutes. So this must have been sitting on the wok. And then they just reheat it. Is there anything wrong? Honestly, is there anything wrong? But most likely it's not it's not gonna have any wok here because it's it's you know it's not cooked under high heat. It's just stewing and reheated. Anyway, enough talking. Mm. Let's try the chili. It's gonna dab a little bit on. Oh, very spicy. 
Pigs, very nice eggy flavor. It's either that the egg to noodles proportion is very high, that is uh, a lot of eggs for a plate of noodles, or that they brought out the egg fragrance very well during the frying process. It seems like the shreds of eggs are yellow, which means that this egg is beaten either in, not even in the pan. In the pan, they'll be white and yellow. So these eggs are beaten beforehand. It might have some impact on the flavor. I'm not sure. Usually people beat it in the pan, I believe. And when you beat it in the pan, you won't get such a homogeneous color. They have this, which is fake embalon, I think. Or really bad one. I can't decide. <laughs> Overall, pretty decent, but seafood flavor greatly lacking, especially coming from the last plate. It might be unfortunate, unfair even, that I had this plate after I had the previous plate. But let me know when life is fair and I'll go and have these two plates again. The chili still has a very, the raw chili taste to it. I'm not sure if any of you has like beaten on raw chili before. It's like this very capsicum vegetable taste. And that taste is very good for cleaning flavor. And because it is good for cleaning flavor, when the raw chili taste takes over, you actually taste less of the noodles. Another means is that the alkaline taste from the egg noodles is seeping out. And it's actually quite surprising that this is the first plate that I can taste this uh, ghee, what we call ghee taste. Maybe it's the lack of the seafood flavor or a stronger lard flavor, but the alkaline taste of the noodles is pretty strong. It does make you like, you know, hit that wall faster. It's not a bad plate by any means, but a very safe one. I would be happy to have this near where I live, but if this place is next to the previous place, hmm. Anyway, time for the verdict. Recap. Hits for Yongheng. Great seafood flavor that elevates the lard flavor. Nice chili, free flow lard. Very nice version of the wet noodles. It is, however, too cheap. It needs to be more expensive. <laughs> and too tasty. I'm not sure about the MSG part, but you know, you gotta say what you gotta say. If I'm wrong, all the better for them. Hits for 777. Very nice eggy flavor. The homogeneous yellow color or egg color might be a technique that I want to look in. The egg flavor is more pronounced than any plate so far, but overall it's still a very averagely decent noodles. Like I said, I'll be happy to have it near my house if I can eat it time to time, but still quite a way to go. I especially didn't like that the chili had that raw taste. Normally what I would do for my chilies if I like prepare it for chicken rice, right, is I will cook it down a bit. Add sugar even, to like round out and mellow out the taste. They did add some like abalone, I believe, or some low quality abalone. I really can't tell. It's nice, it's okay, but eh. Yeah, so let's just go to the verdict. One noodle, I will walk for the Hokkien Mee. Two noodles, I will take a bus for the Hokkien Mee. And three noodles, I will go anywhere in Singapore for the Hokkien Mee. And Yong Hing Fried Squid Prawn Mee is... Three noodles. Ooh, first three noodles of the series. I really, really like how strong the prawn taste is. I'm just a big fan of that. Prawn Mee, or Hokkien Prawn Mee, needs to have prawn flavors. Before, right, there were only like sweet, kind of umami crustacean flavors, but this is the first one where the prawn taste is so forward. It is something that I would want my Hokkien Mee to have. And 777 Fried Hokkien Mee gets... One noodle. Pretty decent. Very legit example of a uh, Hokkien Mee. But there are flaws here and there that I don't really like. If it was not had next to this Yongheng Fried Squid Prawn Mee, maybe it will get a higher rating. But who knows? But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that Yongheng is better. And that's all I have for you guys this time. I received a lot, a lot, a lot of recommendations from you guys. I will try to squeeze as many plates as I can into the series. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.